when you're talking about how to find the area uh, or the volume of a right rectangular prism. The big one today is we're going to work on the fractional unit cube. This is really important because in the VIA testing, this is what they love to test. Like every major test I've seen from the VIA over the last three years has had a question about this on it. Because there's like at least four standards in fifth grade that are covered with just one problem that they can put together. So the first thing I want to do is get you guys to practice marking your text. I want you to figure out how many things you need to do in problem five. Okay? How many tasks are there for problem five? Mark your text. Once you figure out how many different things you need to do, raise your hand. And I'm just giving you a hint. I'm going to wait for most of the people to raise their hand before we go on. So everybody needs to do that as quickly as possible. Go ahead and mark your text. We got what we got to do, and then raise your hand. Okay, judging by the fingers that are up, it looks like most of you understand there are actually three things we need to do in this problem. When you mark your text, it should pop out. So first off, we need to determine how many of each fractional cube it takes to fill a unit cube. So that's our first part. We then need to draw the fractional cubes on the empty unit cube, and then determine the volume of each fractional unit cube. So three distinct tasks that we need to do in one problem. Okay? Now, do we have to do them in that order? No. No? You can do whatever order you want to. So the way I personally would do it is say, okay, I'm doing a half unit cube, right? Yes. They've given me a one unit cube, you see, because they have a one on each of the measures. So if I'm going to make it into a half unit cube, what do I need to do? Make each side, each measurement two, right? So I need to make this one half and one half. I need to make this one half and one half. I also need to make this one half and one half, correct? Then I also need to extend that across the top. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes? You good? Okay, so for me, it's easier to draw it first because now I can do the second part, which is determine how many of each cube it takes. So now I can literally count it. I've got one back here, two, three, four different cubes, right? But then how many layers of those cubes do I have? Two. So how many total cubes do I have? So I have eight cubes. I've now done two of them. I determined how many. I drew it up. All I have left is determining the volume. How do we determine volume? Length times width times height. What is my length? One half. What's my width? One half. What's my height? One half. So now I'm just multiplying. Remember, multiplying that equals to the easiest thing you do. You're really just multiplying across. So one times one is times one. One, two times two is times two, eight. Did they give me a unit? No, so I'm going to just use a generic unit cube. That is the volume for a one half cube, uh, one half unit cube. Questions on any of the three steps? Yes, ready? Because I number the top four, do I need to do the bottom four? Yes, yeah, because there's two layers on it. So I just counted my top layer and said, how many layers of it are there? That's going to be important as I get to four layers or three layers. Okay? You have to understand how many layers of that top one you're seeing. Okay, so we're going to give you guys about four minutes to finish up part B and C. If you finish those, go ahead and do questions six and seven. We're doing the word four cubes, right? Four cubes on each side. Okay. 
by one Is that the only way you could do this? Well, there's literally several other ways you could. That to me was just the easiest one because I had to do the drawing anyway to help you guys understand how that works. Okay, describe any patterns you notice between the size of the fractional cube and the number of those cubes that fill it. Just any pattern? Between the number of cubes and the volume? Number of cubes in the volume, then. Good. The number of cubes was the denominator for the volume. I like the fact that you use good math terminology to sit there too. You can say, say denominator. Denominator of the volume. 
which really does make sense. And it takes 64 cubes to fill it up. The volume of one of them would be 164. Any questions on anything we covered here, guys? Okay, so this was your first step in helping you understand how to use these fractional cubes in order to find the overall volume. Here is your next step. So let's go to page 92. Okay, on this one, if I have a prism with dimensions one and a half inches by two inches by three inches, if I want to pack the base of the prism with half inch cube, so we're going to take this one and a half and we're breaking it into one and a half inches, right? Meaning, this one's a one and a half, that's a one and a half, that's a one and a half. Will that equal one and a half? Yeah. Okay. So analyze the base layer of fractional cubes to pack the prism. So how many cubes do I have going this direction? Three. How many do I have going this direction? Four. So for my base layer, how many total cubes do I have in? Well, because it's three by four, so that means there are 12 cubes. Now we just did the math on this for a half inch cube. What is my volume? One eighth. It's always going to be one eighth of the unit if I'm using a half unit cube. So I know that the volume is one eighth cubic inch according to those in the base, correct? Good. Now, step three determine the number of fractional cubes to pack the prism. So I know how many are in the base, but now my height is three inches. Going by half, how many cubes is it going to take? How many layers on there am I going half? Six. So, what I need to do is I say, okay, there are six layers that make up the height of the prism. So, there's six times that base of 12, or 72 cubes that each have a volume of one inch cubic inch. Is everybody okay with that? Make sense? So, if I actually pack this entire prism, with a cube and dump it out and counted it, I would count 72 cubes. That was good. The volume for each one of those cubes is one eighth cubic inch, correct? We just did the math on that. So now I can determine the volume of the prism. So I take 72 times one eighth and I get nine. So basically what they did, guys, 72 times one eighth. So I multiply the whole number times fraction. What do I need to do? How do I do that? Yeah. So, 72 times 1 is 72, 1 times 8 is 8, 72 divided by 8 gives me 9. So, do you see where that came from? Everybody's good so far. So, this is what they love to have you do on the test. I love the fact that they make us do all this work and then they say use the body formula to check the answer. Body formula is really easy. Body is just length times width times height. If I looked at my cylinder on uh, my prism, what's my length? And I tell you to do a measurement. What's my length? There is no force. One and a half, two and a three. What's my length? First, first second. What's my length? One and a half. What's my width? Does anybody not see that? I didn't think that was going to be so difficult. Is it? Why don't you see that? Oh, I was wondering why we thought that one inch was perfect. I didn't see it. We literally just did that. Volume of a half inch unit cube is one inch unit. Okay. If you didn't know that, you could do one half times one half times one half, and that would tell you the volume of it. But we actually just did that work for you. 
Okay? So I now know my length of the height. Now I can put them into my formula. One and a half times two times three. Uh oh, I have a mixed up, but what's the first thing I need to do? Clam up. Or I need to do the proper practice. Times one is one, one, one is three. Plan dunk and then change the denominator to one. No. Denominator is first. What do I do to the whole number? What do I want to do there? So both of them, right? Okay. Well, then I have three times two is one. Two. 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 You guys understand now how that problem worked out. Did I get a different answer when I did the volume formula versus all of the unit cube? No. Well, if you don't make a math there, you should get the same answer. Now, here's the critical question Does it matter which size fraction of unit cube you use to pack the right rectangular prism in the work example? Am I limited to the size that I can use? Answer yes. Yeah. Why do you say yes? Yeah? Because the change in the change the number is change the size. In other words, it doesn't matter if I use a half inch, the third inch, the fourth inch. Oh, you gotta be careful. I'm a really good poker player. Oh, I'm good at poker too. Thank you so much. Chance. Chance, you're here. Let me just put this to you. Go ahead, you just need one unit cube on this. Go the one thing here. The one thing here. So the one here. Either one, one in a square, and I never hit one in one. You'd be blank space for ordinary. So it doesn't matter what size you use cube on these. Yeah. The size actually does matter, guys. You need to make sure there aren't any blank spaces, so all of the volume is accounted for. Meaning, the first step is you need to make sure what size of fractional cube I need to use to be able to pass completely. So that gets to the next question. So if I'm going to pass my rectangular prism shell with fractional cube to determine volume, how can I determine which size? Good exam. I know you'd be talking to the police about it because you wouldn't talk about non stuff. So. Well, I was talking. Right? Here's your key, guys. I've got one and three inches here, right? I've got a three inch here. I've got a half inch here. What size cube could I use that's going to pack this entire prism without any overlap with any prism left over? One half inch. One um, Why do you say one six? Awesome. So, 
Why did you do the into the one sin? Okay, so look for a common denominator. And this gives me one thing. Does everybody see that? That's actually a really simple concept. Okay? If I use a one sixth cube, I'll need two of them to get into the one third after I use six to get to the one. And I'll need what I need in this direction for my height. I need two just for the one third, but also a one. How many one six cubes did you get to one? Eight. That's going to be eight cubes, right? How many one six cubes will it take to get three into? Then? Eighteen. Good job. How many will it take to get one half in? How many one six to get to one half? How many cubes? Does that make sense for everybody? Okay, so if I do the one six, I can pack it perfectly in all three directions. That's what we need to be able to do. So let's go through this step by step. First, decide which fraction of cube meter. Identify the least common multiple of the fraction denominators, fraction denominators in terms of next to each cube. So there's our first step. We need to identify the LCM. So we did LCM a long time, right? I look at the fractions. I've got a 2 and 3. What can I divide both of them by? And divide both by 2. 1. 1. 1. How do you refer to those numbers then? 1. Relatively fine. Relatively fine. Meaning I just multiply them together. You can see LCM. 1 times 2 is. 2 times 3 is, and remember, I'm multiplying all of them, right? So each cube will measure 1 6 by 1 6 by 1 6. Now, the volume for each fractional cube, we haven't done that one yet. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 6 times 6 is? 6 times 6. Gonna be 36 to get you to 21, 216. Yes. I just want to make sure you understand where that number came from. You don't think it's just some There is a reason for it. We're not going for Louisiana, so I just looked at it. So now we need to determine the number of fractional cubes needed to pass into the expression. This kind of actually already did. But here's the key. What you're doing is I'm taking this measure in and I'm dividing it into one six cube, right? So I'm taking three divided by one six. Is that what you divide by fraction? Yes. No, what do I do? No teaching split. A TK split multiply by the reciprocal. I still make this a whole number, three over one. I keep I change the multiplication. I flip 6 over 1. 1 over 6 becomes 6 over 1. Then 3 times 6 is 18. 1 times 1 is 1. 18 over 1 is 18. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm by width. I'm by width. By width, I do 1 half divided over 6, but I don't know. I keep 1 half divided over 6. Flip 6 over 1. I guess 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Our last one is the height, 1 and 1 third. One and one third was 1 half. Okay. Uh, right? One is 3 plus 1 is 4. So 4 thirds divided by 1 third. Now I can keep, change, flip. 4 times 6 is 3 times 1 is. 24 divided by 3 gives me. So, do you see why those numbers came about? Yes. Good. So, now I'm just going with what is we say my length is? Uh, 
change this, we're going to say, first off, um, what size unit cube Thirty-two times one, and I still 
five by two. Yes. They're both even. So I get nine out of sixteen. Can I simplify that by two? Three, five, seven. Then I am done. It is nine sixteen in this. Sure, you missed. Make sense? All right, let's look at the next one. Again, we need to find out what fractional unit cube we can use. So I'm looking for my, of my denominator. So I have four and three. Can two go into both of those? Three, five, seven. No, so they are relatively prime. So one times four is? Four. Four times three is? Twelve is my new denominator, so I can use one twelve inch cube. Number two, volume equals length times width times height. So what is my length? I would actually say three, but okay. That means this is my width and this is my height, yes? Does it matter which order I put them in? No, so if you did it another way, that's fine. So I have three times one and three fourths times one third. So there's things I need to do before I can multiply. What's the first? A one under the three, so three over one. Now what? Slam dunk, four times one plus three, seven, and my denominator stays the same. And one third. So three times seven, 21 times one, one times four, four times three. My numerator is larger than my denominator, so I need to divide. How many times will 12 go into 21? With how many left over? Nine out of 12. Can I simplify that by two? No, no. three. Okay. And I get one and three fourths inches cubed. If you don't put the inches cubed, you don't get credit. Make sense? Good. Let's look at the next page. All right. This is going to give you practice for your homework, and we have about 14 minutes left. So I want you to do one and two, and you have about eight minutes to get them done. One says calculate the volume of the right rectangular prism. Does it tell you that you have to use unit cubes? No, it's your choice how you find the volume. And Arlene packs a moving truck with cube shaped boxes that have side lengths of one, half, one and one half feet. And the back of the truck is a rectangular prism with dimensions of seven and a half feet by 15 feet by seven and a half feet. You need to answer A, what is the volume of each box? What is the number of boxes that will completely fill the truck? And then calculate the back of the, the volume of the back of the truck. Any questions? So you have about eight minutes to get those done. Go for it. Yeah, first one should have been up Oh, uh, when you by buying formulas, you know, like one half times two thirds. I give you the thing when I plan first. That gives me two and six. Times one half times two thirds. One more time. Our units were all there is for that one. Second one. Now I've got several pieces. I've got a box of one and a half feet. Meaning for the volume, it's going to be one and a half times one and a half times one and a half. So I need to do my slam dunk. That's going to be two times one is two plus one is three. So three halves times two halves times two halves. Count three is nine. Count three is four. Four times six is five, guys. It goes to twenty-seven. Three times with three left over, 
and we're looking at there's the volume of each of those boxes. Yes. Now they said I need the number of boxes. So now I'm going to have to figure out the LCM LCM program. So I found my fractional unit, one and a half for a box. I'm going to divide each of those by that. I'm going to take seven and a half divided by one and a half to figure out what how many boxes will go in this direction. So again, we need to do our slam dunk. Gives us 15 halves divided by 3 halves. 9 is going to be my two chain split. 15 halves times 2 thirds. Got a lot of good reductions in here. I guess me 5 over 1, meaning I need 5 boxes in that direction. So if you take 5 boxes wide, it's going to go, and actually my height is the same, so that's also going to be 5 boxes. And 15 is actually just double seven and a half, right? Yes. So that means it's going to be 10 boxes in this direction. So I need 5 times 5 times 10. That gives me 25 times 10 or 250 boxes that are needed. <laughs> Calculate the volume. Personally, I would just go back to this. Okay, let's go to our homework real quick. So let's paint back to seven. We're not here. Not giving them quite a bit of help. Okay. Quiet. Have yeah, this torn out and write down what I write down. Turn the number. Number of boxes by one half. Okay. What is the volume of a right of this time? This is what I need. They're saying there are 300 boxes, each one is a one to two. Well, you need to find the volume of one of them. And then you can multiply that by 300. Okay? Our next one, calculate the volume of each right rectangular prism. We're going to tell you how you have to do it. So, guys, keep it easy. Volume equals length times width times height. I have a length of eight and a half, a width of two and a fourth, a height of five and three fourths. You don't have to worry about your fraction of cubes, any of that other stuff. Makes it a lot harder. I would not do that unless you're required to. Okay, our directions for B and C are the exact same as what we did for A. That means I can calculate my volume any way I want. So I'm just going to go times width times height. You should not be caught. It's on my side. I don't know what's going on. He didn't stop. So, do your length and width and height. Your length and width and height. Double keys. Make sure you include your units. Make sure you simplify. Okay? Uh, you're doing some really big numbers and something to do with this homework. Sorry, guys. The numbers are pretty nasty. There's not any real reductions. So you're going to end up with some really big numbers. Okay? But your line is not that difficult. Just watch out for that. What? 